Yeah, so if you already have 511 in your binder, please don't take another one. We're going to switch things around because I realize it'd be nicer to quote unquote not give you homework on a Friday. Although, guys, your homework is just whenever you choose to do it, right? So some of you are probably weekend homework people. Some of you probably aren't. So today your homework is 511, quote unquote your homework, right? We'll collect that on Monday. Um, but I thought today it'd be a good idea to take some time and reestablish some classroom norms. What's a norm in every single classroom that should be happening right now? Well, the graph paper doesn't happen in every classroom unless they stole my thing. Mia? Wearing masks properly. Uh, yeah, I'd, I wasn't even thinking about that, but yes, thank you. This, see, you guys are smarter than me. This every day, I realize you guys are smarter than me. John? Yeah, what goes with looking at the board and reading what's up there? Plan book! Guys, you gotta know we're gonna check your plan book here in a couple weeks. If you didn't write down 511 in your plan book for today, get it out and do it. Make sure that you're writing on Thursday. If I was you, I would squiggle out Monday and Tuesday. I would like write no school or something. All right, so then I'm going to walk around and check your plan book and make sure you have 511 written down. Oh, it's funny how many other people then grab their plan book when I say that. Do what? Antonella's still not here, right? Okay. Yeah, I had it because we gave him out in 1A, Layla, so thank you for asking. Hey, double check that your name is on the front of your plan book. And I know that there are some awesome, like, coloring pages in there because Mr. Estes is sweet. Please do not give in to the temptation to do that during class. we got class to do. All right, so classroom norms. Just as we start, oh, this should have a question mark on it. Why won't my question mark work? Aha. But that should be much further down. All right, so I'm going to really, like, abbreviate what we write here. But so a couple things that people already said was masks. And guys, it's not like anybody likes this. I don't know, actually, I might. Somebody might enjoy wearing masks. Who knows? But, like, we just got to do it. Right? Things are not good right now. That's just the reality of it. But we want to keep you in school. The last thing I want to do is try to share an office with my wife at home. Or, yeah, no, I said that right. Um, I'm going to end up at the kitchen table. Right? Like, her office is her office. She works from home now. I, I don't want to go remote. So we got to keep each other healthy. So masks. What else? We said plan book, right? Gravity. We'll write it down because it is gravity is a classroom norm. Oh, I thought these were post-its and they're actually just like square pieces of paper, so I was kind of disappointed. They're still cool. I just thought it was cooler. What else? <laughs> Mia? Yeah, respect, right? We need to make sure this is a safe space to like make mistakes. Because guys, as we get harder into or deeper into the, I don't want to say hard, deeper into the more difficult math, because there's just less difficult and more difficult, really. Um, you got to be, like, you got to be bold and be willing to make mistakes and willing to ask questions. And did I talk at your class about you guys got to make me earn my paycheck? <laughs> so, in case, and Layla wasn't here yesterday, guys, at this point, we're really hoping that you're comfortable enough that when something doesn't make sense, you speak up. And if it still doesn't make sense, you speak up again. Don't think like, oh, well, I asked the question once. I can't ask anything else. Like, if it still doesn't make sense, you got to say, nope, try again, teacher. Like, we were literally in a parent conference last night discussing this with a student saying, like, you got to tell us if it didn't make sense. We might need a classmate to explain it. We might ask another teacher to explain it. Like, maybe what I'm saying doesn't work for you. That's a me problem, not a you problem. You gotta fight for your education. Make us earn our paycheck. All of us teachers, right? Not just me. What else? John? Yes.
So here's one of the other reasons why I may do a seating chart. is like I'm going to make Eli move because we're going to have some group talk today and he doesn't have anyone to talk with right now. But we don't use all of the desks in here. But like a norm that I, I don't know, I can probably just write down the word like group. This is why I went with threes instead of fours because CPM wants you guys to be in groups of four. Threes work way better. Like it tends to most people have a voice when you have three. Pairs definitely work. Right? Pairs, each person has to talk or it's awkward, right? If only one person's talking. Um, but guys, the reason that we sit in groups is to work with each other. But also, what have I been trying to brainwash you all of kind of quarter one and yes, quarter two about what you should be doing in groups? Yeah, but yeah, but more specifically. Well, yeah, that's like all of all of school is getting to know people, right? But for math, what else do you think I want you doing in groups? Talk about math. Talk about what math? Like like outside of my forty five minutes I get with you guys. Your homework. We should be doing homework in groups. So that's one of the reasons that I might at least like once a week put you in different groupings is so you can meet more people and realize like oh we could work on homework together because we're in the same extensions or we're in the same AO like. You should be working with each other. Anything else anyone wants to throw out as a norm that we should remember as we head into January and semester two? I had this conversation with somebody this morning. Semesters, semi, what's semi mean? Half, right? So winter break was the semester flip. So we're in semester two, but we're in quarter three, right? So it's a little confusing. We're in quarter three, but we're now semester two. Guys, we're on, we're on the, we, we, I don't know if we can say we crested the peak, because I still think we're climbing, but man, we're in the second half of the year. It's crazy. All right, so now we get to start talking about heart-to-whole relationships. So, because I didn't want to uh, waste a resource paper giving it to you, you have this on your 511 handout. So, this is what you should be looking at. Should it still be out on your desk? Because it says, well, it doesn't say, down here it says examples from class. I should have put it up higher. What's this thing up there on the right? And uh, guys, I should probably just take volunteers because I don't know if all of us know about that. That thing on the right. All right, so I'm a child, and this is why you teach middle school. You never really have to grow up. I like fruit snacks, so I got my box of Pixar fruit snacks here, right? These are actually not my favorite. They're kind of chewy. But on every piece of food that you buy at a store, no matter where you are, like any country is going to have this. Hopefully this can focus in just a second. And I know there's one up on the screen, but it's cooler to show you like, hey, in real life. So if I decide that for breakfast today, I'm just going to eat some fruit snacks and I eat one package of fruit snacks. Can anyone see anything on here that is like a tiny bit concerning potentially? Like what if I'm still hungry and I ate like two or three packs of fruit snacks? Eve? Why is that concerning? 19% well, percent of what? Percent of the daily value the scientists and nutritionists and all the people that are smarter than us have determined that we should be eating. So a lot of people care a ton about calories and that's the real big number, right? The real big number there is calories. But then you look at these percent daily values and okay, so there's no fat, quote unquote, there's no fat. But if we're looking at how much sugar is there, there's nine grams of sugar and guys, all of it was added. All of it was because like, oh, kids like things sweet. Let's add some more sugar into this. So like I eat these sparingly because they're not really all that healthy because they've got 19% of the like added sugars that I should be eating in a day. That means if I eat how many packs of these would I pretty much be at 100%. How many packs would I eat and I've essentially gotten to 100% of my, just shout it out, five. But there's eight, there's 10 in here. If I eat this whole box, that's really unhealthy. 
No, I probably shouldn't do that anyways. Yeah, right? If we're So, can I go above 100%? Do you think people consume more than 100% of, like, certain things every day? Yeah. Do you think some people consume under 100%? Yeah, and especially for you guys, that gets dangerous because you're in the middle of puberty. Your body needs this stuff. You need your carbohydrates. You need sodium. You don't need lots of, but you do need some of it. It helps you stay hydrated. Um, my wife should really be here if I'm going to start talking about the parts of the nutrition label because she has her master's in nutrition and health. John? Oh, wait, go back up. It's really, this one's really blurry. Yeah, I don't know what this is. And a serving size is one cup. Does this tell us what it is? No, this doesn't tell us what it is. It does have 20% of your calcium, though. You need calcium for strong bones. That's not very much vitamin C. 2% of vitamin C. You guys want to compare another label? Okay. Here. You tell me if you think this is healthier or less healthy. Shh, you can't see that. So, sorry, my camera's all goofed up. This is also why I wanted to do this lesson today, just to get you guys to start thinking about things. Yeah, so here's where things get complicated. And this is not a nutrition class. You'll, you'll learn more about that next year. So these, um, somebody already said, they're like Nature Valley uh, crunchy bars, right? These granola bars also have added sugars. So which is healthier? Well, that's a complicated question. Because the fruit snacks, do they have much of anything else? Not really. They got like nothing, nothing. They got some vitamin C. They got no protein. There's no, um, I mean, trans fats are good. I, yeah, no. Miss Martin, do you know which one's good and which one's bad? Then maybe saturated fat is good because over here, these have saturated fats. Like you need fat, right? Like your body needs some fat to operate. You need calories. Guys, what are calories? Anyone know what calories really are? It's a unit of energy. A calorie is energy. If you have zero calories, you'll have zero energy, right? So you need calories for energy. How many calories are you supposed to have in a day? 2,000, right? That's the standard, but actually it's different for kids and different for adults. Uh, but the standard average is 2,000. So we're going to start to calculate some of this stuff on our own. And no, I can't really tell you which is healthier. These are just the random snacks I keep in my drawer. All right, so, anyone want to read? I feel like I've been talking too much. Anyone want to read? Thank you, Kylie, because I feel like John's about to start teaching my class if I keep calling on him. Nutrients, actually. You're right. It's the same word, essentially, but. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tag you in for your task if you want, but we might as well let Kylie go ahead and read the important piece of it. According to the label above, one serving of cheesy macaroni and cheese. That's what it is, it's cheesy mac. 15% of the recommended daily amount of saturated fat that a person consumes. A nutritionist recommends that a person should have no more than a serving amount. John, you want to tag in? Okay, so can I I'm sure you can. Okay. So on this is for, for the nutrition check, it says serving size one part. Which the entire thing. Well, yeah, but <laughs> the serving is really 
makes you sound like like a werewolf or something yeah. weird. Chocolate's not necessarily bad for you. It all depends on how it's been refined and like how it's been processed. Um, that Kylie question comment. Yeah, so all of these nutrition questions, I really should, my wife's working her butt off because the system they use to pay people got hacked. Uh, so she couldn't come in even if I asked her to come in. But she knows all of this stuff way better than I do. It all, it's kind of the same as what I said to John. It all depends on how they refine it, how they like make it into the thing that goes in the box. Because I mean, I can go home and take raw pasta and cheese and milk and like make my own mac and cheese. And that's going to be way different than the stuff I buy in the box. Right, because that powdered cheese, well, that's not even really cheese. I mean, it kind of is. All right, so here's your task. At your table group, and this is not on your worksheet, if three grams is 15% of what we should eat of saturated fat each day, then how many grams should we be eating total? So like people said at the beginning of class, graph paper is pretty much a norm. So if you don't have graph paper, you might want to get it just to jot some things down on to keep your notes page a little bit, uh, a little bit better. There's a little bit of a reminder on your handout if you're curious how to solve this problem. But I'm going to give you a couple minutes before I jump in and help. If three grams is 15%, how do we figure out the 100? Reminder of oh, I closed all the handout things. Sorry. Yeah, I did close them all. I'll just use my dot camera. There's a reminder of your favorite tool that CPM has given you. What do we call this? The giant one. And I don't know where I set my cards. Carmen, can you tell me? Hey, we're gonna solve this together, and then we're gonna move on to do another one. Carmen, can you tell me how the giant one can come into play in a problem like this? And if you don't know that's all right, you might have solved this differently. Did you guys solve this? Totally fine. Antonella's not here. Kylie, did you guys solve this back there? Um, I'm in the middle of the diagram. In the middle. Marina? Yeah. 
I heard some good conversation back there. You want to just tell us what you guys did? And do you know why? I know why you did it. Do you know why you were doing it? Ratios. Guys, everything that we, well, okay, everything's a big word. Most of what we've done this year all relates back to ratios. And if, you, if you're like, oh crap, if he asks me what a ratio is, like if I pull the next card and I say, what's a ratio? And you couldn't answer it. Please, on your paper, because I'm trying to make your life easy, look right here at the top of your handout. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by what operation is it that we use to compare the two numbers? How do we set it up? If I'm going to set up something like this to this, that... Division! So right here, please put division, and then actually in parentheses, I would write fraction. Because we often aren't really dividing the numbers, we're just setting up a fraction. So what I want you to write right here in your example space is if 3 grams, 3 Grams. Guys, you got to label it. If you don't label it, things don't make sense. I'm going to start to be a giant stickler about labels, like counting questions wrong if they don't have labels. Because otherwise, I don't know if you're talking about dogs, cats, pizzas. I would prefer pizzas. What's the other thing we know about three grams? It is 15%. And this is why we got to have labels so we know what the heck is going on. And then who what? Uh, daily value. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna really, I try to keep this as clean as possible, as few like extra letters. What percent are we trying to find? A hundred percent. So would that go on top or bottom? Bottom, because that's where we put our percents. So here's why Marina and Layla were doing the work they were doing. They were saying, "What do I multiply by to get over here?" Marina said times six wasn't big enough. Times seven was too big. Jesus, make sure you catch stuff up with your group. Otherwise, homework's going to be a bit difficult. <laughs> if I don't know what to multiply by. Anybody? Divide backwards. Grab that calculator. So 100 divided by 15... Guys, here's the trick. Look up at the screen real quick. Here's the trick. I can keep this number by just hitting multiply and it grabs it. ANS means it grabbed the answer. It grabbed the answer. And now I'm going to multiply it by 3 to do that in the numerator. Kaboom. 20. So those scientists and nutritionists and whoever that are smarter than us have said we should have 20 grams of saturated fat in a day. Or no more than. Certain things, that that's kind of like a max. Other things are like, yeah, you should have that much. There's actually this other thing called reverse dieting. Um, and I, my wife will never watch my YouTube channel, so it won't matter. Right now, my wife is reverse dieting, which means you eat more than you're supposed to because you've dieted your body down to a point where dieting isn't helping and like cutting out food and cutting out fat, like it isn't helping. So you got to kind of reset your body and say, all right, I'm going to eat, eat, eat. And then I'll diet again. Like, then I'll be, like, real healthy. So it's, like, there's a lot of interesting science in nutrition. Lucas? Uh, I got the same answer in one. How'd you get it? Hold on. Can you please send Matt Lucas to the office? All right, go. Lucas to the office. Right? So, um, I did 15. I, I put it in my fraction form. Because I didn't know what to do. And most of all, I gave him my six. And I gave him my six. And I'm like, all right. Brilliant. So, like, seriously, 
brilliant, but you made it more difficult. So that's why it, it was brilliant, because you didn't solve it the easy way. <laughs> Bad word, sorry. You didn't solve it the way that, like, it's just one step. You broke it apart. So what Lucas said was if 15% is 3 grams, sorry, Lucas, maybe went a little fast for us. He broke it down to, well, really, we could say every one gram, and you, you gave me the 10%, but one gram would be what percent? One gram would actually be 5%. Yeah, guys, one gram would be 5%. And then we could work it from there. Actually, like, there are lots of ways that we could solve this. But setting up ratios is how we can keep things, like, agreeing with each other. Questions here? You want to tell us how? Or did you get the same answer? Yeah. You want to tell us how? Lots of ways to get to Florida. If you want to share it, we can share it. Have I not said that in this class? No. Hey, if we're trying to go to Disney, maybe not right now, but if we're trying to go to Disney, do we have to drive the same way? Yes. No. There are tons of roads to get from here to Disney. No, Florida's no. really far away. There's one main highway most people take, but if I want to go over to the coast and drop down the coast, I can. If I want to go to Texas and visit my family first and then come back, I can. Right? As long as we get to Disney, we'll all ride the roller coasters together. So if you want to share it, go ahead and share it. I just feel like um, every person should have one Okay. think that works. I'd want to check what you wrote down. So here's the other big thing with semester two. If it's not written down, it doesn't really count, right? Like if I can't see what you did, so make sure it's all written down and I can check with you in a second if you want some verification. Um, let's try this over here then. Since we're looking at our worksheet, try this problem. Most often in this course, ratios will be written as fractions or stated in words. Oh, crap, we forgot to show the other way that we can relate this. 3 grams to 15%. Sorry, still up here. We could also write it using a colon. 3 grams colon. 15%. You can write it that way, and that's often how a ratio is given to you. But when we go to use it, we almost always turn it into a fraction. So this is also a ratio. Guys, here's my trick. The colon is pretty much already telling us, eh, not enough space here. The colon's pretty much already telling us divide, right? The colon looks very, very, very similar to the division symbol. That's not an accident, right? That's why mathematics uses it for this purpose it pretty much already looks like the division symbol. So over here, write the ratio of number of girls to the number of total students in the class. Write the number of girls to the total students in the class. Let's write it in using the colon first, and then write it using the fraction to make sure it works. This is one of those cases where I just may not understand what that means. And I, I'm trying to be really aware of that. If I do this with a group, see this where I say, you know, that's not how we're doing it. I just don't quite understand what that means. Um, I'll try this next problem and go from there. And like, we'll do a few of these and then hopefully things will click for both of us. It, so, sometimes that's how we solve math. Like, literally, we just write stuff down until it makes sense. I had a professor who always said, if you don't know what to do, just write something down. I'm like, but. Prof, I don't know what to do. And he's like, write down anything. So he would just make us start writing.
Eli, how am I going to write this ratio of girls to total? 15 to 28. So on your paper, guys, if we do 15 colon 28, or we could write 15 over 28, both of those tell us the same thing. Questions? The raisins and peanuts is just an example of giant one. If I want to make like a trail mix recipe or something that has four raisins for every seven peanuts, I know this is one of those ridiculous math problems where no one's going to count peanuts. But if I end up with 140 total peanuts, how many raisins should I have? Giant one, right? Just a reminder of how we use the giant one. Questions on writing ratios. One of the main reasons we use equivalent ratios is percents. And if I'm going to use percent, Aiden, what does the other ratio over here, if I'm going to talk or try to get to percent, what does this ratio need? What does percent tell us? Yeah, where would the 100 go, top or bottom? So guys, this is the reason we're doing what we're doing. Once we have a ratio, we can turn it into a new ratio that'll actually get us percents. <clears throat> All right, so trying to remember which part I wanted to do next. Cheesy Mac, cheesy Mac. That's what we were working with. All right, this is on your paper. If we're looking at granola bars now, right? I'm not eating Cheesy Mac for breakfast, at least not while I'm at school. So one granola bar contains four grams of dietary fiber. What's fiber do? Helps you poop. If it has four grams of dietary fiber, so guys, seriously, if you're having issues with like bowel stuff, eat more fiber. I know, I'm a weirdo. I take this way beyond math, but if, you, if you're having issues, you probably don't have enough fiber. The label says four grams is 16%. Hey, your paper doesn't have this on here. So when they tell us this, we should probably go over here and say, okay, well, four grams, if that's where four grams is, what would I write down here? 16, because they just told us that, 16%. So throw that on your paper. Well, actually, it should go probably below the little bracket because they set up a bracket for us. Can I figure out what percent is left over? Don't, like, don't shout it out. So I want you guys as a team to figure out what percent is left over, how many grams are left over, and how many grams would be 100%. Right, so fill in, boom, boom, boom. Okay, I'll walk around and help as needed. Or do you not have a group? I thought you had somebody else there. Sure we have labels on our numbers, right? So once we put a number down here and up there, make sure we label it. Well, 
What's our total percent we're trying to get to? A hundred. What operation can I use to find the missing percent? Not to, not to find the missing percent. Subtraction. Subtraction, right? Take away what we got from what we want. If we subtract 16 from 100, what do we get here? 84%. So what you should be trying to solve for is how much fiber is something really interesting. Do 4 and 16 get along? I'm going to assume Lucas doesn't care that I'm going to brag for a second. 4 and 16 get along! Lucas just said, um, so 1 gram, 1 gram would be how many percent? 4 percent. Because if I use equivalent ratios, and I divide by four, I can just figure out what every one gram is worth. That's not the only way to do it, but that's a really good way. But the numbers won't always get along. This won't always be able to happen. So Lucas, I am sorry. I'm going to do away with those things because that's that's like ideal situation. We got lucky there, right? What percent, Vanessa, am I actually trying to solve for? What percent? 84, right? So if I put 84% over here, Does anyone know what to multiply by to get there? If you don't know, divide it backwards. But Layla, what would you get? Twenty five hundred. So you are correct. So we multiply by five point two five, which gets you. Ooh, careful. Twenty one. So 20, ooh, Grams, thank you for catching me, not labeling who said that. See me after class, look at who said it. So this is 21 grams, we better label every number, which means, how many grams are we supposed to have every day? 25, right, if we total it up. And when I get my final answer, I often write the entire label out. Because you might as well make sure you're working in grams and not gophers. I don't know, I was just trying to think of another G word. Um, look at this one. Vitamin C. Guys, vitamin C is pretty darn important. It's like one of those things that keeps you healthy. One large carrot, right, like think Bugs Bunny. One large carrot contains approximately six milligrams of vitamin C. The daily intake of vitamin C is 60. One carrot, six milligrams. So Risa wanted to find out what percentage of her daily vitamin C she gets from one carrot. Talk with your team. If one carrot is six grams, 
and those scientists, nutritionists, whoever tell us we're supposed to be eating 60 grams, what percent is Risa getting every time she eats a carrot? Chat with each other. Well, that was fast. Well, you have the answer. I want the process, not the answer. This is where we're going to write down one of the most critical things we write down today. Here's the deal. Coming back from winter break is weird. My plan is that next week on Monday, we review like everything we've done today essentially. But guys, one of the most important equations we're gonna use for like the next month is this. And I would write this down if I were you. Percent is part divided by whole, but there's one other thing that you either have to do or think about in your head. Which is where you kind of go. Then we have to do times 100. Why, you might wonder? Now, you probably don't wonder because y'all are smarter than me. So those of you who shouted out, we have the answer. What what'd you do? Took six. If you're right, you're right. But if I do part divided by whole, hey, give me your eyes up here real quick. If I do part divided by whole, I get 0.1. But what that's actually telling me is 0.10 is well, that's the decimal value. So if I multiply by a hundred it spits out my actual percent value. So if you can think in decimals and you can remember, oh yeah, 0 0.1, well that's 10%, that's great. But if not, you gotta remember to multiply by 100 after you get that decimal number. Please do not lose this handout. It's not due till Monday and we need to finish it anyways. We need to finish this, like those in-class questions, but we're out of time for today. Tomorrow, we will continue to revise your chapter four mastery. We will continue to work on that tomorrow. All right, have a wonderful day, guys. Hey, it's already Thursday. I've only been at school two days and it's Thursday. Look at that craziness.